Hi, welcome back to AT Math. Today, 10.5, Experimental Probability. An experiment is an activity involving chance. Each repetition or observation of an experiment is a trial, and each possible result is an outcome. The sample space of an experiment is the set of all possible outcomes. <clears throat> Simply put, an experiment means you're going to try something, and to try means to have a trial. And you're going to basically decide what's going to happen. Suppose I were to get, say, rolling a cube, say a six-sided cube. There's six possible outcomes, so I might have six different outcomes. Tossing a coin, you have heads or tails, so I have two possibilities. Spinning the game in a game spinner, in this case here, looks like I have four possible things it can land on. Now, identifying sample spaces and outcomes. Identify the sample space and outcomes shown for each experiment, so in case of heads and tails. Now, while I said to flipping a coin is heads or tails, if I flip two coins, there are actually four possibilities. I might get a heads and a heads, a tails and a tails, a heads and a tails, or a heads and a uh, heads and a tail, or tails and a head. And so there's four possible outcomes, if you will. Now the one that happens to land is one possible outcome out of four. Spinning on the game spinner is the same idea. You have yellow, red, blue, and green. And let's say we rolled a green, so we have one out of four. In that case, there's a one out of four chance you're going to hit green. An event is an outcome or set of outcomes in the experiment. Probability is the measure of how likely an event is to occur. Probabilities are written as fractions or decimals from 0 to 1. In other words, 0% to 100% likely. So 0% is impossible, 100% is certain. 50% is as likely as it is not, so even money. Unlikely is closer towards impossible, and likely is closer towards certain. Now, before I continue, where would you ever need this in life? Any time you involve any sort of game of chance, and Vegas, of course, is built on gambling, as other places are now built on gambling, my word to you is this. Understand that the casinos don't cheat you, because they don't have to. They don't have to rig the games. The probability is built in to where they're going to win more often than they're going to lose. So anybody who gambles for a long time, the numbers are telling you that over time you are certain to lose more money than you're going to win because of how the percentages are stacked up. So know that every single game that casino offers, they're going to take in more money than they're going to pay out. Otherwise, they couldn't afford the shiny big casinos with all the flashing lights and everything else. So a little lesson for you later on in life. If you decide to gamble when you're appropriate age, um, it's up to you once you're of legal age, but know that. Odds are very strong that you'll be giving your money to the casinos rather than taking any home. Estimate the likelihood of an event. We'll say impossible, unlikely, likely is not. We'll just say 50-50 for that. Likely or certain. There are 31 days in August. Well, since August always has 31 days, that is certain. So as long as there's an August, there'll be 31 days. Car let's say Carlos correctly guessed a number between 1 and 1,000. Well, you could pick a number between 1 and 1,000, but the chance of you actually nailing it is 1 to 1,000, so it's very unlikely. Not impossible, but unlikely. A coin landing heads up, well, heads or tails, there's one or two choices, either it'll be heads or it won't be. So that's 50-50, so that's as likely as it is not, even money. And D, Cecilia rolls a 10 on a standard number cube, well, in other words, a dice. Well, since the dice only goes from 1 to 6, the chance of you rolling a 10 is not possible, therefore it's impossible. You can estimate the probability of an event by performing an experiment. The experimental probability of an event is the ratio of number of times the event occurs with the number of trials. The more the trials perform, the more accurate the estimate will be. In other words, experimental probability number of times that an event occurs divided by the number of trials. For instance, if you flip a coin and you have a choice between heads or tails, you might flip a coin once and it lands on heads. You'll say, wow, it landed on heads 100% of the time because you did it one time. Well, say you flip it two times. It might land heads twice. It still might be 100%. But the more you flip heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads, it's going to be about 50%. So the more you do, the more trials you get, the more likely that it's going to be accurate to whatever the percentage is supposed to be. Finding experimental probability. An experiment consists of spinning a spinner. And again, they say that here you hit red seven times, blue eight, green five. If you add all three up, you had basically 20 spins, and you landed on eight. You landed on blue eight times out of 20. You take eight over 20, or two fifths of the time, or 40% of the time, you landed on blue. Spinner does not land on green. When the spinner does not land on green, it must land on blue or red. 
So again, you're saying when it doesn't land on green, so it's 7 plus 8 is 15, so 15 out of 20, which makes 3 fourths. So 3 fourths of the time it did not land on green. You can estimate probability to make predictions. A prediction is an estimate or guess about something that has not yet happened. For instance, a manufacturer inspects 800 light bulbs and finds that, nine, that 756 have no defects. Now understand that if you check something more than 50 or 100 of them, you probably have a very good idea of what the ratio is going to be, other than an odd bad batch or something like that. You have a pretty good idea. So what you do is you take the 796 divided by the 800, and you'll find that out of your sample size, 99.5% were good to go. Only 0.5% were bad. A manufacturer sent a shipment of 2,400 light bulbs to a retail store. Predict the number of light bulbs the shipment are as likely to have no defects. Well, we'll take the same percentage, which is 99.5 or 0.995, simply times the 2,400. You'll find that 2,388 bulbs should be fine. Now, why do you care? If you're a major retailer, you have built in that some of the merchandise you send to stores might be broken. It might have problems in shipping. It might be a something somehow when stuff got shaken around and put in boxes and thrown in a warehouse and put on a shelf and maybe employee dropped it and didn't tell nobody, it's likely that some things might be broken. However, so let's say Walmart calls and said, hey, you know, out of our uh, 2,000 PlayStation uh, 4 that we sold this year, of the, you know, of the 2,000, we had two that were brought back. You'll say, well, two out of 2,000 is 0.1%, and you'll say that's within the tolerance of what we allow, so we'll take those back and refund Walmart for the money. Now, if Walmart tries to tell them that 80% of the PS4s are broken, that's an issue, and they'll have to figure out why that happened. So they have retailers have that in place, knowing that some will be returned, but should only be a certain amount. A manufacturer inspects 1,500 electric toothbrush motors and finds that 1,497 have no defects. You would simply take this divided by this times 100 to find out what you have. And that's it. There's much more to do on this. We'll probably do a little, little Vegas experiment in class tomorrow. That's fine. But until then, we'll talk to you later. Bye.